Attention humans, it's been 10 years since the last space shuttle launch, and considering the cost of launching one space shuttle is similar to the net worth of Minecraft, it makes sense it was the last launch. The space shuttle promised to be a reusable craft, which I guess it technically was. However, considering the fact they left the orange fuel tank to burn up in the atmosphere, I think we can make the shuttle even more reusable and the best way to prove it is with a 10 year old game that for some reason still has bugs. Yeah I'm talking about Kerbal Space Program and the past week I have been doing plastic surgery to turn this into this, an SSTO. In order to test the space shuttle, I decided to have the shuttle swap out the crew for the moon base I built in the last video. However, in order to take the shuttle past low curb in orbit, I will need to refuel it using Starship. So if you all like overpriced space programs, I recommend you stick around until the end. Anyway, let's jump right in. For our first launch, we will send the tanker Starship into orbit. This Starship will remain in orbit to refuel the space shuttle in the next launch. Yeah I know we're doing things differently this time. Deal with it. After igniting the engines and releasing the launch clouds, the rocket begins to lift itself off the ground. I could hear the super heavy booster screaming about how it has no legs. I reassured him that this mission doesn't require legs. Once we reach the thinner parts of the atmosphere, I begin my gravity turn. I also throttle down the engines to keep the g-force low. Super Heavy's juice tanks were running a bit low, so I separate it from Starship. The booster then proceeds to turn around and start its boost backburn. Now, as I said earlier, this launch is different, and when I mean different, I mean we are going to land Super Heavy with the grid fins. So keep watching, or else you are gonna miss this dope landing. After deploying the grid fins, I start my re-entry burn early. I have to start it early, because accuracy on the mission is paramount. If Super Heavy is 1 meter off the target then it will crash. As the booster approaches the landing zone, I throttle up the engines and use the grid fins to align the booster with the pad. Once Super Heavy was directly over the pad, I tell the launch tower to arm the catcher. The booster was coming in a little too fast, but luckily I managed to slow it down enough. The booster began to scream, like I took away its Fortnite V-Bucks, only to be awoken by it sitting safely on the launch pad. I have to say, I was surprised I even landed the booster so accurately. Meanwhile, the tanker starship has been chugging its way to orbit. This orbital insertion wouldn't take long, since the payload on this mission isn't very heavy. I took the time to admire these new dope plumes I installed. Yeah I know guys it's awesome. I just recently installed some different textures and I have to say, these look much better than the old ones. Like I said earlier this orbital insertion would take long and that's why 2 minutes later, Starship finally reached orbit. Now, for the launch you all have been waiting for, the Space Shuttle SSTO. That needs a better name. Too many syllables. Anyway, I fire up the engines, and in response the Space Shuttle begins rolling down the- one of the engines had a hard time waking up, but a threat of percussive maintenance caused the engine to run smoothly. With engines running at full power and the shuttle speed steadily increasing, I begin to pitch the craft upwards. The shuttle was a little slow, but luckily the shuttle successfully took off from the runway. The space shuttle is the crappiest glider I have ever seen in my life. I'm pretty sure a sumo wrestler can glide farther than the shuttle can. When this hunk of ceramic reached the open ocean, I began to aggressively pitch upward. In order to escape the atmosphere, I need to be traveling at 1300 meters per second. The rapier engines start to throttle up when our speed surpasses 400 meters per second. However, right now we are traveling slower than the time it takes for Boeing to do one static fire. We gotta get to the thinner parts of the atmosphere where breaking the sound barrier is easier than recalling your grandma. As you can see, as soon as we rise above 10,000 meters in altitude, the air simply doesn't care, and we can start picking up some real speed. Once the atmosphere started to become salty about me traveling three times the speed of sound, I began to pitch upward and start the nuclear engines in an attempt to escape the air resistance. Yeah, that's right, I made the shuttle radioactive. I switched to closed cycle which is essentially the same thing as making the engines go super saiyan. 
With this massive thrust of closed cycle engines, I break free of the atmosphere James Bond style. Then, I switch to nuclear engines, because the future is nuclear, but also because these damn engines are so efficient. So anyway, I'm gonna use these engines to circularize our orbit. Despite the nuclear engines having a specific impulse that is higher than my S80 score, the engines output such little thrust that you could eat Taco Bell and experience more acceleration at night than you ever would from a nuclear engine. Anyway, eventually I reach our tanker starship in orbit, I extend the docking arm of the starship. Starship will do the docking here, since the shuttle has no mana propellant left. The shuttle is really low on juice, so refueling is essential for reaching the moon. After successfully docking the two vessels and refueling the space shuttle, the Kraken decides to help me undock the vessels which is a little strange, considering the Kraken has been an asshole to me. Once the starship has socially distanced itself from the shuttle, I start the deorbit burn. Now, before we start our dope re-entry, I have a message from our homie Safety Doggo. Safety Doggo wants you to like and subscribe, so he can keep you safe tonight. Anyway, back to the video. Well it turns out the atmosphere doesn't like us slamming into it at orbital speeds, but unfortunately I don't care, and we gonna slow down anyway. This re-entry will be a standard one, and for most of the descent, Starship will use its belly to slow its speed, before landing softly at the Kerbal Space Center. I check up on the engines and they don't seem to mind the heat which kinda makes sense, since rocket exhaust is, well, you know, kinda hot. As my velocity decreases I begin to point the Starship forward, to lower our vertical speed. I hope Starship has practiced gymnastics, because it's about to do a backflip. Starship begins to flip vertically, and lights all three engines. I know Elon wanted to use two engines, but I paid for three engines and I'm going to use them all. As we descend towards the ground I throttle up the engines. Everyone told me I was going to slow, but eventually I touch softly on the ground. Meanwhile, our space shuttle has started its escape burn despite it asking for permission and me saying no. Anyway, this escape burn will take forever for the reasons I said earlier. These engines are so damn weak, and being forced to use them is like listening to a 2 hour lecture for a class you didn't want. But unfortunately the margins on the mission were so small, the nuclear engines are the only ones that could work. 7 minutes later, and our escape burn was finished. I feel bad for Matt Lone and all the videos, where he had to build an SSTO. 3 days later, I finally reached the moon. The craft is a little lighter which is why my capture burn took 3 minutes this time. Enough ranting about nuclear engines. The Kerbal's reaction, when they realize the moon isn't actually made of cheese was pretty funny. I don't know why you would think a grey ball in the sky is made out of cheese. I wonder what kind of food they have seen to make them think the moon is made out of cheese. Anyway, after my capture burn, I deorbit the shuttle and begin my descent. Luckily the lunar gravity is so weak that I was able to use the nuclear engines to slow us down. Once I reached the surface, I had the shuttle hover so I could turn it horizontally to land on its wheels. However the shuttle really liked the grey dust filled bouncy castle and decided to jump around but luckily I calmed it down with some reaction wheels. After the shuttle was safely on the ground, I used the shuttle to drive to the station, like I'm picking up some girls from a party. The sight of a shuttle just pulling up to a lunar base like this still makes me laugh so hard. I wish I wasn't drinking water right now. As you can see I had all the Kerbals get out of the base and the shuttle, so I could swap the crew. After refueling the shuttle I take off and begin my journey to orbit. The old crew was pretty tired from working on a moon base for a couple weeks. So I gave them a break, and had the reserve crew take over. Luckily the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, so this burn didn't take long. Unfortunately I had to use the closed cycle mode of the rapier engines, to take the shuttle into orbit, since the thrust to weight ratio of this craft is really low, when its juice tanks are full. After coasting to my apoapsis, I begin my escape burn. This burn didn't take long. Since I was so far away from the moon, a single fart could send us on an escape trajectory into the rest of the solar system. Three days after my escape burn ended, I finally reach Kerbin and start my deorbit burn. 
I will use the atmosphere to slow us down which means we will be traveling almost twice as fast than normal for this re-entry. Of course, as expected our re-entry was so fiery and hot that it put my mixtape to shame. Luckily the bathroom tiles on the underside of the shuttle don't mind the heat, so we don't burn up like a shooting star. As you can see we did indeed survive re-entry, and I quickly prepare for touchdown, like it's the Super Bowl. Once the runway is directly under the shuttle I deploy the landing gear and touchdown softly on the runway. Honestly, I was surprised I was able to modify a 40 year old ceramic space plane to go to the moon and back. I also didn't use a parachute to slow the shuttle which is the most alpha thing you can do. Eventually I did come to a stop 3 quarters down the runway. Not bad. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to brush your teeth, wash your hands, and subscribe. Morks out.